Now, your project for this. Historicism. Historicism is an approach to writing about literature where your primary focus is history. Now, how many different ways can you think about history? With a film like this, the obvious thing is political history. Mary was queen, she's the daughter of Henry VIII, she dies, Elizabeth comes to the throne, but there's a lot of contention. She's Protestant. Mary is Catholic. They've been at war for years. So you've got not only a political history to pay attention to, you've got religion too. This film frames itself in terms of the religious history. In the beginning, you see three heretics being burned at the stake. This was not unusual in this time period. It was happening far and wide. You've heard, no doubt, of the Spanish Inquisition, but what you should gather from this film is that the Spaniards were not the only one who were burning heretics. This thing begins with the uh, execution of three heretics. It ends, did you notice, with the three heads on the pike. Now, here's my problem with political history. Maybe it's accurate, maybe it's not. In this case, they took a lot of liberties. As you learned in adaptation, the filmmaker has to somehow turn this into a story that works in two hours flat. And he may have to take a bunch of characters and cram them into one. He may have to take a lot of history and make it happen in a hurry. And there are a number of things in this thing, politically and religious-wise, that are jammed together. Now, something else that I find really interesting about this particular film is we see a bit of the history of drama. Dramatic history. Where did you see drama in this thing? Remember when Elizabeth is coronated? Is that a word? Coronated? At her coronation, they have a party. And there's dance. And the men are on one side and they're dancing, and the women are on the other side and they're dancing, and the music and the dance, that was the main entertainment. Do you remember the pirate skit? I think that's a different scene. But you got all of these guys in pirate boats or no, in uh, Spanish boats, and then this English pirate comes in, and you've got the ladies doing the blue cloth to simulate the waves, and everybody's laughing. There's no attempt at all to make this realistic. It's, it's just play act. In the middle of the 16th century, that was what passed for high drama. Shakespeare was still a little kid, and he hadn't even begun to start putting together the plays that he put together. The court drama was about as good as it got, and it was not very good. Now, here's another aspect of history that I found really interesting in this. If you noticed in the credits at the end of the movie, uh, they told you which pieces of music that they uh, performed here. And they had very good orchestras and very good little string quartets and things like that producing the music. They spent a lot of time making sure that the music was very accurate for this film. Now, you also hear the 20th century music in the background because they've, uh, they've got to do the Hollywood thing and have a soundtrack, a score. But they made sure that that score was consistent with the traditional music. They used the same instruments and the same uh, rhythmic <coughs> patterns and the same tones and things like that. And you can see by looking at the 16th century music and thinking about music today, you can see that little bit of history going on too. One of my favorite aspects of this film is 
the art history. If you have studied art history, you recognize several major paintings in this film. At the very end when Elizabeth is white face looking into the camera, that thing is a <coughs> duplicate of a portrait that was painted during her lifetime. <coughs> the big portrait of Henry VIII when she goes upstairs to get away from everybody. She's standing in front of the portrait of her father. That's a famous portrait. Remember when the assassin is talking to the cardinal, the guy in red? That also, that's another famous portrait. And part of the look of this film is trying to capture the color and the shadows and, and the compositions of the painting during that period. So when I ask you to write a historical paper, a historicist paper, I don't just want to know what happened in which year and did this film get it right. There are a number of different ways you can approach this. Now, how long is this paper? Maybe two pages in length. How many of these aspects can you jump in and write about, and write about effectively in this paper? Pick one, maybe pick two. <coughs> See what you can work with. There's plenty of material, historically speaking, for you to uh, find. You can start with Wikipedia and go from there. Now, I think you know Wikipedia is not considered to be a good academic resource, but I will tell you right now uh, that Wikipedia is a great place to get started. Uh, Wikipedia has links that will take you well beyond Wikipedia. And uh, you can do a lot of research right there. If you happen to be a musician and you already know something about music, I would build on that. If you're an artist and you like that world, build on that. But pick the angle that you want to work on. Once again, I'm trying to give you a, a choice to work with here. All right, are there any questions about this? When's yes, sir. It, when's it due? Two weeks from Friday. This Friday, your adaptation paper is due. Uh, you've got two more weeks to do the other. By the way, two weeks from Friday, I believe that begins spring break. This semester is going fast. I'm with you. Yay, spring break. Okay. Now, adaptation. Are there any questions about adaptation? that paper. What time on Friday is it due? <laughs> well, here's my promise to you. I am not going to start grading them Friday night. So you can work on that just as late on Friday as you want to. If you work on it till 2 o'clock Saturday morning, that's fine too. I'm, I'm not that worried about the actual time clock here. But this is the week you need to get that one done and be moving on to the historical paper. <coughs> All right. Now, as always, I'm available. Email wfranklin at nctc.edu. If you have questions, feel free to write me. Some of you already have. Uh, I am you know, if you feel like you're stumped and you need some advice on how to get moving on this thing, contact me. Uh, some people, uh, I have set up Illuminate sessions. That's where I put on a set of headphones and a microphone and sit in front of my computer and you know, we can talk online using Illuminate. I'm not averse to uh, answering the telephone if you need to call me. Uh, my office phone is uh, published, and it rolls over to this phone here. Now, maybe I don't have it on me, but I'll get a message, and I can call you back if I need to. So I'm available. If you want to talk about this thing, contact me. My job is to help you through this, not to flunk you out. So don't go worrying about flunking. Worry about getting help if you need it. Yes? Sorry, that's completely opposite from the last teacher that I said. Mm -hmm. you know,